You walk by the river and there's a castle in the town. So you pass the castle and you walk down the river and then there's this wall. I think if, you, if you're living in, in the area, obviously you're aware of the fact that it's here and it happened here. And it's, you know, it always makes you feel sad. But if you are, for example, on a run, you just want to run beside the river, you're passing that, by that wall and don't think too much. You have to get detached. My name is Marta Kadłuczka. I'm a guide in Auschwitz Birkenau State Museum and I've been working for the museum for 12 years now. Since my grandfather works here and I actually was born in the area, I've been around for a long time. And I remember the place from when I was little. But my grandfather worked for the museum for 30 years and he was an electrician in the museum. And he was suggested I applied and I did. My name is Łukasz Lipiński and I have been working uh, at the museum for 11 years. Why people want to work in a place like Auschwitz? Because it's not a typical job. My grandfather, uh, great-grandfather that was a prisoner of Auschwitz, uh, his name was Fra Stanisław Nalborczyk, was imprisoned in 1943. He was not willing to talk much about Auschwitz. For five years I was studying economics. I, I even have a master's degree in economics. But when I was doing my fourth year at the university, I decided that... Um, my grandmother told me that there is a, there is a training for, 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 to become a tour guide. And I decided to, to, tr to try. I mean, it took us... It took me a couple months, the training, then the exams. And uh, I remember my ver very first group, after which I wanted to quit. You can learn dates, facts, numbers. But then when you are standing in front of the people, uh, telling the story and you see people crying or, or getting emotional, uh, this is something that you need to learn, but it takes time. My name is Tomasz Michal, and uh, I'm responsible for all the guides here in Auschwitz Memorial. And I've been working here for almost seven years. I do feel the responsibility uh, of sharing this 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 story of, of Auschwitz, Auschwitz Birkenau, first as a person who is responsible for training the guides. So I'm also responsible for, for the right, uh, correct na narrative about, about Auschwitz and, and Birkenau and, uh, and the Holocaust. And uh, on the other hand, also as a guide, each year we have at least 2 million visitors and they come in fact from all over the world. I mean, we have, uh, the biggest number is still from, from Poland which is uh, over 300,000 a year. But then uh, there are many visitors also from the uh, from United Kingdom, uh, many from uh, the United States, also from, from Israel or, uh, for example, from, from Germany. え、私の名前は中谷武史と言います。え、ポーランドに住み始めたのが1991年です。え、その後 アウシュビッツ 
、ヨーロッパでもこのような悲劇があって、こういった歴史をどう受け止めて、後世に伝えようとしているのか、それを学んでみたいと思いました。日本も過去の歴史を直視して、えー、周辺の国々と、えー、将来良い関係を築いていくために、ヨーロッパで行っていることが一つ参考になるのではないかと考えてここで案内しながら勉強をしていますミキャオミヘレアンドレオラエアリボダリタリアソンイタリアノエラボロクイアダオシュイツコメエデュカトレグイダダチュルカセイアンニムゼオ All'anno、eh, più di due milioni di persone visitano questo luogo, in quanto è diventato anche simbolo di quello che è stata questa tragedia e comunque la Shoah. Per quanto riguarda me in particolare, ecco, il gruppo per quanto riguarda l'Italia,、eh, circa l'anno scorso 140.000 e più italiani hanno visitato、eh, questo luogo e quindi hanno voluto conoscere appunto, e provare nel luogo esatto ciò che è stato.、Quindi, Ecco, la media dei visitatori comunque negli anni continua ad aumentare perché comunque l'interesse è sempre maggiore comunque di questa cosa. Quindi è in aumento e soprattutto il bello è che la maggioranza dei visitatori sono i giovani e questo è importante. Mi chiamo Maja Schreierowa Buchańska, lavoro nel lavoro di provodnika 12 anni. Nie tylko w Muzeum Auschwitz, ale też w innych miejscach związanych z historią, na przykład w fabryce Schindlera, albo na przykład czasami pracuję w manufakturze witraży. Pracuję też taką tłumaczką przy tłumaczeniu tekstów albo spotkań、e, z, ze świadkami historii, i też przy tłumaczeniu na przykład seminariów, spotkań takich kilkudniowych, organizowanych na przykład przez muzeum albo przez instytucje historyczne. Na początku bałam się bardzo pracować w muzeum. Zupełnie przypadkowo się dostałam do tej pracy, bo bałam się. Wydawało mi się, że to jest za trudny temat. Ale teraz bardzo chcę pracować, dlatego że nie chcę, żeby moje życie było puste. Nie chcę na przykład siedzieć przed komputerem i przepisywać faktur, tylko chcę robić coś, co wydaje mi się, że może coś zmienić. Skupić bardzo i dowiedzieć się czegoś o tej grupie, którą będę oprowadzała. Dowiedzieć się od nich, czego oczekują, na przykład ile mają lat, jaka, jaki jest ich poziom wiedzy, dlaczego przyjechali,、mm, jakie filmy widzieli. Zadaję im takie podstawowe pytania, typu na przykład, czy wiedzą, co to jest getto, czy、mm, w czasie lekcji historii przerabiali wojnę. I staram się、mm, wyobrazić sobie, co oni wiedzą, i do tego, co wiedzą, się dostosować, żeby jak najpełniej opowiedzieć. Many people that come to Auschwitz they already know the history of, of, of this place. They have seen movies or they have read books. However, to come to the authentic side, that makes a difference. You're standing in front of the gate、uh, in Auschwitz I with ironic work will set you free, the sign Arbeit n e u t r a l The gate that seven, over 70 years ago, every Day people walk, maybe hoping that at some point, someday, they will be free people. And this sort of feeling that you're you are in this place, it's in a place where that many people suffer, that many people die, that, that's a big difference and, and, and a big challenge.、Uh, not all the people. That are coming to Auschwitz uh, uh, really、um, know how to deal with that.、Uh, the emotions,、uh, the, sometimes they're just there's too much. I mean, people cry,、uh, people get sad.、Uh, not always they're able to do even like the whole tour, but for most of them, it's, it's possible. I mean, they go through the whole site, they see Auschwitz one, two, and after. They, after we finish the tour, for example, they, they tell us how important for them was to see this place. How,、uh, how suddenly they said that we were expecting something else, but the scale of what happened here, this was for them 
overwhelming and it's, it's really something that I hope that they will not they will not forget for long. Japan has a long history of fighting in the Second World War, especially in the Second World War. でも、日本の学校教育では、そのことはあまり教えてくれないし、学びません。ですから、ヨーロッパがその時代のことをどのように学んでいるのかは、私たちにとっても参考になります。そして、これからも日本人も近代の戦争の歴史についてもっと学んでいくべきだと思います。ここで、えー、案内をしていると、いろいろな出来事に出会います。特に案内している人たちの人々の感情です。えー、日本人だけではなくて、えー、周りで見学している人たちの様子を見ていると、いつも印象に、えー、残ります。それは涙を流している人もいれば、えー、もしくは高らかに大きな声を上げて、えー、祈りの歌を歌う人もいたり、えー、そういった感情が渦巻く場所で、ですから、こういった場所に身を置くということは、いつも刺激があります。Mam do tej pory w pamięci takie wydarzenie, kiedy tłumaczyłam, byłam w Czechach wtedy, to była taka kilkudniowa konferencja i tłumaczyłam panią, która była więźniarką obozu w Terezinie i ona była świadkiem likwidacji odcinka, w którym była z całą swoją rodziną. Ja pisałam o tym odcinku pracę magisterską. To jest taki odcinek, który się nazywa B2B, Birkenau. Odcinek, w którym byli umieszczeni głównie Żydzi z, z czeskiego, z getta na terenie Czech, z Terezina. I to getto było mm, takim jakby gettem propagandowym i później z, tych, z tego getta wysyłano transporty do, do Birkenau. I ten odcinek był likwidowany w taki sposób, że większość ludzi została zgładzona, a mniejszość wywieziona do innego obozu. I ona była w tej mniejszości, a jej rodzice zostali. I ona mi opowiedziała później, już po tym, to, był taki, to było takie spotkanie nagrywane chyba dla IPN-u, nagrywaliśmy wtedy i później po tym spotkaniu mi powiedziała, że ona do tej pory nie wie, czy jej rodzice idąc na śmierć wiedzieli, że ona przeżyła. I od, że do tej pory nie daje jej to spokoju, a to było w 1944 roku. I że nie jest w stanie o tym zapomnieć, i że nie jest w stanie przyjechać nawet, że odwiedzała inne miejsca, w których była, a że do tej pory nie wie, czy jej rodzice umarli, bojąc się o nią, i że nie jest w stanie tego zapomnieć, i mi to do tej pory zostało w pamięci. Diciamo, eh, ogni metro, ogni passo che noi facciamo, comunque si dice che si calpesta un luogo dove è morto l'uomo. Perché effettivamente, se ci pensiamo, chi è morto qui è l'uomo, cioè l'umanità, che effettivamente si è persa, perlomeno in questo frangente di, di tempo. Ogni luogo è praticamente un luogo importante. A me, ad esempio, che colpisce molto può essere la baracca Birkano, la Suisse de Birkano, dove furono inclusi i bambini, la baracca numero 13. Questa ti lascia veramente, diciamo, abbastanza. Sconvolto in tal senso, ma poi anche luoghi come ad esempio le scale、eh, dei crematori, sempre a Birkano, pensando che centinaia e migliaia di persone per l'ultima volta, proprio davanti a quel gradino, hanno visto come noi la luce del giorno. Quindi, ogni luogo comunque ha un senso e, e ti prende dentro, sicuramente, ti parla il campo. Sicuramente, nel blocco numero 4 c'è uno dei luoghi più. Diciamo、uh, scioccanti, se vogliamo usare appunto questa parola, in quanto in una stanza ci sono circa due tonnellate di capelli umani, capelli umani femminili. E sapendo comunque che una capigliatura femminile ha un peso medio più o meno di 40-45 grammi, ti rendi conto che in una stanza praticamente ci stanno in quel momento circa 44.000 donne. E 44.000 donne con un nome e un cognome che chiaramente noi non conosciamo, però in una stanza ci stanno solo lì. Ci sono alcuni posti che non mi piace, specialmente quando si tratta di un'esibizione, per esempio, c'è una room con artificial legs, armi. Non mi piace entrare in questa room. You know, non mi ricordo mai. Previous visits to the museum,、uh, I was quite young. But when I applied for the job as a guide, 
I was in a training and I remember when they took us around the place and they were showing the museum to us, when I walked into that room, it was like punching my face. Um, I did not feel like this looking at women's hair or anything else, just, just this bit. I didn't want to go inside that room at all. You know, every time when you go to building number five, where you have all the belongings of the Jewish victims brought 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 to to mostly to Birkenau, and when you see that uh, most of these people took the things they considered to be uh, somehow essential in a in a new place, you know, like pots and pans or, or good shoes, and then it makes you think that okay most of these people really had no idea of where they were really going they really took the things that they, they thought they would need in the in in the uh, in the new place if you take for example you know kitchen utensils and so this means that that you're really hoping that there is a place you can settle in and you know taking into consideration that many of them took also the, uh, for example uh, kosher uh, pots and pans so, so they really believe that they would be able also to keep the kosher in a camp or wherever they are, they, are, they are brought to so you know it's really a big, big optimism and, and uh, people some I mean our visitors sometimes think that okay people all the victims knew perfectly where that they are being brought to to to, to a camp to to, to 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 be killed but it really shows us that uh, most of them were completely unaware of what is the real purpose of of, of the deportation piękne w tej pracy jest to że czasami się zdarzają takie grupy które nie są standardowe i że y, mogę opowiadać tą historię którą znam jakby Opowiadam na przykład 2% tego, co wiem. I y, zdarzyło mi się kiedyś tak, że miałam grupę, która się składała z samych dziewcząt i pani mnie poprosiła, żebym op opowiadała tylko o kobietach. Więc natychmiast w mojej głowie się ułożyła taka zupełnie inna historia i to było y, bardzo trudne dla mnie, bo jako kobieta wyobrażałam sobie, w jakiej sytuacji te kobiety były. Przypomniały mi się wszystkie relacje, które tłumaczyłam, bo ja tłumaczę też e, relacje na przykład do książek które są w archiwum po czesku albo po słowacku i przypomniały mi się mm, na przykład sytuacja kobiet, które były w ciąży, na przykład taka straszliwa relacja, nie chcę jej przetaczać w całości, dotycząca na przykład kobiety, która była zmuszona do... Była, po prostu wykonano na niej taki zabieg usunięcia ciąży w piątym miesiącu ręcznie przez współwięźniarki funkcyjne albo na przykład kobiety, które, które za to, że widziały, że chciały zobaczyć swoje dzieci, zostały ukarane śmiercią, że na przykład starały się zbliżyć do bloku, w którym były zamknięte dzieci. I taka, jakby, takie oprowadzanie niestandardowe też jest takim trudnym, ale bardzo takim rozwijającym doświadczeniem. To, ale y, też y, to, że przy, przyjeżdżają ludzie, którzy mają inne wymagania na przykład niż większość, powoduje to, że my się możemy rozwinąć. I to tyle. Auschwitz it's not something that you can get used to, I mean, this work. It's not something that you can do without any emotions. Uh, I think that every person that works here has a place important uh, for, 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 for them. Uh, what still uh, hits me, strikes me, is block number five. Behind every object, artifact, there was a person. Somebody came to Auschwitz carrying all those suitcases, bags with the shoes, with the personal belongings. Those things were important for those people. And today they're telling the story. They're telling the story of those that came to Auschwitz and, and were killed, were murdered in the camp. Um, when you look at the shoes, when you look at the suitcases, suitcases with the names that sometimes are the only proofs that people existed at Auschwitz, you, you realize that this is not a pile of objects, but this is a proof, something that 
tells a story of the people that were killed, murdered in the camp. And you look at the kids' stuff, that's, that's, that's also hard. Altro luogo pesante e forte, quando vediamo quelli che sono gli oggetti appartenuti agli innocenti più innocenti di tutti, cioè i bambini, quindi la stanza dei bambini dove passi e vedi queste scarpine di questi piccoli bimbi o piccoli vestitini di bambini di pochi mesi. E anche questo chiaramente ti lascia un segno, soprattutto se poi quando tu torni a casa magari ti ritrovi il tuo bambino o la tua bambina più o meno della stessa età di quelle che indossavano quel vestitino o quelle scarpine che tu hai visto, quindi in questo senso. Uważam, że bardzo szczególne miejsce, które niestety nie jest codziennie dostępne dla odwiedzających, to jest dział zbiorów, gdzie znajdują się na przykład dzieła sztuki tworzone przez więźniów, którzy byli zamknięci w ogóle w czasie, kiedy istniał obóz i też dzieła sztuki, które powstały po wojnie, obrazujące, obrazujące rzeczywistość obozową. Mi się wydaje, że większość ludzi na przykład może nie być wrażliwa na sztukę, ale niektórzy ludzie, którzy są jakby rozumieją świat oczyma, bardzo potrzebują na przykład kontaktu z obrazami. Ja osobiście byłabym bardzo szczęśliwa, gdyby na przykład taki, takie obrazy były to, jeżeli chodzi o działy muzeum. Natomiast jeżeli chodzi o takie miejsce, które, przy którym jestem codziennie, kiedy oprowadzam, to dla mnie to jest ściana śmierci. Myślę, że to jest takie miejsce, przy którym rzeczywiście nie powinno się w ogóle mówić. I bardzo się zgadzam się z tym stanem rzeczy, który teraz jest, że tam po prostu milczymy i prosimy odwiedzających, żeby tam nic nie mówili. Bo jest taka scena zabicia rodziny, która była widziana przez okno z innego bloku. I ten więzień widział podprowadzenie pod ścianę śmierci pięcioosobowej rodziny, w tym trójki dzieci. I było tam jedno niemowlę, które matka trzymała na ręku. I ja tą scenę zawsze mam przed oczyma, kiedy tam podchodzę. Ci ludzie byli po prostu zabici w taki sposób, żeby rodzice dokładnie widzieli śmierć swoich dzieci od najmłodszego do najstarszego. I wydaje mi się, że to jest takie okrucieństwo, którego nie da się zrozumieć ani wytłumaczyć. Nie ma żadnego nawet... Żadnego oczywiście usprawiedliwienia nie ma, ale nawet nie ma sposobu, żeby go pojąć. I wydaje mi się, jeszcze mam w pamięci coś innego, co kiedyś powiedział inny więzień, że nie jest ważne mówienie o tym, ilu ludzi zginęło tak bardzo, jak w jaki sposób zginęli, że ważna jest każda jeden, jedna pojedyncza śmierć. I zawsze o tym myślę, kiedy idę pod ścianę śmierci. Większość z nas nakłada taką maskę po to, żeby się obronić przed tym, że to jest takie strasznie trudne miejsce i większość pewnie moich kolegów myślę, że ciężko jest im, ale nie chcę o tym mówić. Przypuszczam tak, bo ich znam. Ci prende anche da un punto di vista emotivo anche a noi molto, quindi diciamo non si riesce né ad essere indifferenti né ad abituarsi ad un tipo di lavoro del genere. Quindi ogni giorno è comunque una scoperta, un qualcosa di diverso, fino a quando poi si arriva al termine del lavoro dove appunto ritorniamo a casa dalle nostre famiglie e ritornando a casa dalle nostre famiglie comunque insomma lì tentiamo di abbandonare un attimino comunque di scaricare quella che è stata la tensione emotiva della giornata però è chiaro che non è assolutamente facile nel senso che il nostro lavoro non è un lavoro d'ufficio dove dici inizio finisco quando ho finito chiudo l'ufficio il giorno dopo se ne riparla, no? Quello che abbiamo provato qui, l'esperienza che abbiamo avuto, comunque ci rimane anche a casa. Ecco, quindi un pochino prosegue sempre. Un vecchio direttore del museo lo diceva sempre, no? Che quando praticamente uno riesce a resistere a questo, tra virgolette, lavoro per almeno tre anni, poi non l'abbandonerà mai, perché comunque il luogo ti entra dentro e quindi non l'abbandonerai mai. Io adesso sono sei anni che lo faccio e devo dire che aveva ragione questo vecchio direttore, tra l'altro ex deportato. Of course the, the, the place itself, you know, Auschwitz as, as such affects us, so affects people who, who, who work here, so you cannot come here, even if you work in the office, even if, if you work in in some department that is not directly linked to, for example, uh, you know, the 
the story of the, the, the Holocaust and, and so on. Uh, so, so, so still the place affects you. So you, you, you cannot be completely disconnected. You cannot just come here, do your eight hours and then, then come back home, for example. Uh, so uh, I think you, you cannot also uh, get used to working here nor as a guide nor as a as a as a, as employ as an employee of, of, of the place so it, it is really a, a special place a difficult place and um, it's somehow you know mo most most of the people who work here they come back home they have the, the, the families but but still you know they, they, they keep thinking of of Auschwitz, of the Holocaust, even 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 back home. So uh, again, uh, Auschwitz really affects people work here. For many people that are working at the memorial today, it's something personal. Um, they they had relatives that have that have been to the camp. Uh, they know people that have been here as prisoners. Uh, they know people that lost their families at Auschwitz, so there are also there are personal reasons why people do this job. Uh, for me, it's it's not just a job; it's it's a personal thing as well. Um, my great grandfather uh, was a prisoner of Auschwitz, and my grandmother she was she was a tour guide at Auschwitz for almost 40 years. To work at Auschwitz, it's a, it's a, it's a big challenge and, and huge responsibility. Two years ago, I, I found a, a document that states that uh, the person called uh, exactly like me. My family is only 50 or 60, 60 people here, here in Poland. So that this person was brought to, uh, brought to Auschwitz in 1943. And the last uh, sign, uh, the last time he was still alive was in uh, September 19, 1944. Uh, but again, yes, he was he was no he was non-Jewish, so he was brought here because of the so-called political reasons. Frankly, he just escaped from the forced labor so somewhere in in Austria. Uh, was caught later by, by by the SS men, and as a punishment, he was brought to the camp. Many survivors say that uh, today it is in fact our responsibility, I mean uh, the, the responsibility of, of, a, of a guides who, who work here to, to share their story and just make people remember about, about what they experienced in, in a, a here, here in the camp. So uh, I think all of us, all, all the guides, we are today 330 guides uh, in the in museum, so it's responsibility of of all of us to, uh, to not to make this this these people be 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 forgotten. My name is Lazar Kleiman. As we arrived, it took us two days to unload. Everything was gone. My shoes were gone. My clothes was gone. And uh, my, my, uh, everything was gone. So me instead, I had cloaks, Dutch cloaks with wooden soles, and um, I had a pair of striped pajamas. You know, that was my uniform. I was going to look for my family. Where are they? Because I, I was told they're going to stay in one of the barracks. They're going to be happy there. You know, we're going to work. So it'll be all right. So I was looking and looking, trying to find the women's barrack, and I couldn't find them. So I asked one of the guys who was there already, and I said to him, I arrived yesterday in the afternoon, and I said, I can't find you know, where my mother and my brothers and sisters are. He says, well, you wouldn't. He says, you see that building up there? And there's a chimney, they see the chimney going? What about it? Anybody goes in there, he says, nobody comes out from there. So he says, what do you, you know, he's not gonna see him again, that's it. So I started to cry because I never said goodbye to them. Even. The, the things, you know, the, there was men, you know, just walking along for no reason. They came and shot him in their life. No reason at all. I saw women coming in with their babies. I said to them, you know what? 
If I was you, I mean, if I would have been caught, I would have been taken away, but I had to be careful. So I said, you know, give the babies to your grandmother or to your mother. I knew that girls could survive because they needed workers, but if she has a child, couldn't survive. Well, one person didn't believe me. So she went forward with the baby. And I remember she got to the same table as I did. Uh, the guy must have said something, I don't know what, I think he said, uh, they can't go in with the baby or something like that. Then she, well, she wouldn't do it, so, so he got hold of the baby, slowed it in the air and shot it. And then she started screaming. And then he shot her as well. And he couldn't have, he couldn't have that she's screaming. I think of my mother. And because I speak about the Holocaust, I tell these deniers that I actually dreamt a few months ago. I was in tears getting up. I saw my mother in the, in the guest chamber. She was still holding her children. It's because I speak about the Holocaust. So if anybody tells me the Holocaust didn't exist, I don't know what they're talking about. I want this thing never be forgotten because it's very important to go. Whoever goes does a great deed, believe me. Goes to Auschwitz and sees the truth. There's a lot of deniers. They say that they, they never existed. And I say to them, well, if it didn't exist, I hope you're right because I would have my family then. But it's very important for us to carry on and not stand as not, and not stay behind and say, ah, we should stand up for ourselves, all of us together, and we should not let these things happen again.